The patrons have spoken, and thus we have... That's not Mandibuzz. What? Vullaby? Y'all voted for Vullaby? My patrons are trolls. All right. This baby vulture is notable both for the high level at which it evolves into Mandibuzz, level 54, which is stunning for a single stage evolution, and its bone armor, which simultaneously manages to resemble a baby's diaper and a human skull. Today is our first ever episode dedicated entirely to Little Cup. And so we ask, how good was Vullaby actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Vullaby didn't truly get started in black and white Little Cup until after the tier had become a past generation. While the metagame was current, Vullaby was not a bad Pokemon, but found it nearly impossible to differentiate itself from the same typed Murkrow, which was one of the most out and out excellent Pokemon around and dominated the tier throughout its existence. Superior bulk alongside the combination of nasty plot and weak armor were not enough for Vullaby to see high level usage when Murkrow was so much faster and stronger. After X and Y came out, the Gen 5 Little Cup player base decided to ban Murkrow as it was just too powerful, and thus Vullaby got his chance. It was not the next Murkrow, but it was quite decent. Its added bulk shown in allowing it to check the dangerous Abra, and it was generally tough to KO from full health while being able to effectively threaten the opponent. Its main problem was that thanks to its crippling stealth rock weakness, it wasn't easy for Vullaby to remain at full health. Being forced to roost to remain healthy was highly exploitable. Thus, while the defensive utility was nice, it couldn't be relied on in the same way a Mianfu or Porygon might. Many players chose to focus entirely on its effect Defensive capabilities, even dropping Roost entirely for the extra coverage of Heat Wave. Some didn't even bother with Nasty Plot. They wanted Vullaby to be more immediately threatening. Thus, they chose to use its naturally higher physical attack, whose extra strength was even more apparent because it used the massively powerful Brave Bird for stab. Continuing in the same vein of immediacy, this Vullaby was equipped with a Choice Scarf, meaning it no longer had to wait for weak armor to become speedy and start threatening much of the metagame. It didn't even bother running weak armor. Instead, it went with Overcoat, giving it the incredibly valuable trait of being immune to damage from sandstorm and hail. Scarf Veil maintained momentum nicely with U-turn, could remove Eviolites for both itself and its teammates with knockoff, and was a vicious late game cleaner with Brave Bird. It was especially useful on flying spam teams alongside the likes of Drifloon and Archon. Overall, Vullaby had an unusual but decent debut generation. The 6th generation introduced the Fairy type, which was a blow for the Dark type Vullaby. However, Vullaby was far from put upon. It also received several incredible buffs. First, Knockoff received a huge power boost, making it a genuine offensive weapon in its own right, in addition to its disruptive utility. It was further buffed by Dark no longer resisting Steel. Second, Overcoat now bore an immunity to powder moves, such as Spore. This meant Vullaby could block Sleep from the ever-common Fungus. Finally, the Defog buff meant Vullaby could now remove entry hazards, helping itself and its team Teammates. Vullaby rarely even wound up using the fog, though. The bulkier sets that could fit it were passive and often exploitable, leaving many players to view them as a waste of a great Pokemon. Vullaby's physically offensive set, on the other hand, was its bread and butter variant that established Vullaby as one of the metagame's most dangerous defining Pokemon. With great ease, Vullaby would hit the field safely thanks to its tremendous bulk and good typing. Once it did so, it then proceeded to deal out crippling damage between its strong, Eviolite removing knockoff and its even stronger Brave Bird. The combination of these two stab moves went unresisted by nearly the entire tier. The one exception was Ponyard, who got torched by Heat Wave once it had lost its Eviolite, or simply U-turned on and outlasted, as it didn't have any recovery and Vullaby easily kept itself healthy with Roost. While it didn't use the fog itself, it appreciated its teammates fogging for it, as its massive bulk was on full display when it didn't have to contend with Stealth Rock. Even with this offensive set, it was still an excellent check to many top tier Pokemon such as Abra, Timber, Krogunk, Fungus, Ghastly, Snivy, and Pancham. Losing its Eviolite to a straight opposing knockoff wasn't even the end of the world, as Vullaby was more or less guaranteed to make equivalent progress on the opponent, as there was simply no such thing as a truly safe switch into its knockoff. It wasn't meant to be a perfect wall, just a strong offensive check, capable of significant retaliation, and at this, it was top tier. Once again, Vullaby was an integral component of flying spam teams, as it was especially tremendous at opening up opportunities for the terrifying Flechinder to clean up. Overall, the 6th generation was a massive step up for Vullaby, as its excellence defined much of the Oraz look. Little Cup metagame. Stepping away from Little Cup for a moment, Vullaby also had a decent niche in PU. The tier needed the foggers and so Vullaby was called on, as it possessed some nice defensive utility. It was a perfect counter to Jump Pluff, blocking Sleep Powder and punishing Swords Dance attempts with Foul Play, while shrugging off a boosted acrobatics. Vullaby was also effective in staving off several psychic types, as well as the likes of Fracture and Karukarok, while providing momentum for its harder hitting teammates for U-turn, an incredibly crucial move for ensuring that Vullaby wasn't too passive. Its main problem was that it couldn't switch 
switched in on every stealth rocker, and thus its stealth rock weakness was as exploitable as ever. It was a defogger that lost 25% of its health upon entry, leading to forced defogs and roost and general backfoot play. This was a necessary evil for many teams. Fortunately, there were some matchups in which Vullaby was invaluable. When it could turn its defensive utility into a free U-turn into a threatening teammate, unperturbed by stealth rock, there was little else you'd rather have. It was just difficult to consistently be unperturbed by stealth rock. All in all, Vullaby's PU niche was unspectacular and a symptom of how desperate the tier was for hazard removal. However, on occasion, it did manage to show itself as more than just a defogger. It was by no means a great Pokemon, but thanks to its utility in both the hazard game and ability to check several dangerous Pokemon, Vullaby had its own place in the Oraz PU metagame. The 7th generation buffed weak armor. Now instead of boosting speed by one stage upon being hit by a physical attack, it boosted two. Vullaby could certainly afford to take one such hit, given its excellent bulk, when doing so would allow it to outspeed the entire metagame. It is no exaggeration to call it the single best Pokemon in the tier. Throughout the entire generation, Vullaby was absurdly dominant. Berry Juice ensured Vullaby didn't have to actively heal itself with Roost, allowing it to focus entirely on messing with the opponent. And boy did it have an overflowing abundance of excellent options with which to do so. It could finally run Defog effectively, as Berry Juice meant it no longer had to make the difficult choice between fogging and roosting on one high pressure turn. With special defense investment and Berry Juice ensuring it didn't have to play passively to heal, Vullaby also functioned as a terrific check to several dangerous threats like Abra and Ghastly. Of course, while the defensive set was now genuinely good in its own right, for the first time Vullaby often went full out offensive, as it was even more terrifying than ever. Now wrap your head around this, Vullaby could actively use Stealth Rock and Brave Bird Recoil as healing tools, as they often knocked Vullaby into range of its own berry juice. The juice was generally incredibly useful for allowing Vullaby to switch in and launch its vicious offensive attack even more reliably than it had in the previous generation. Vullaby was so good at getting on the field, even its physically offensive set ran to Fog, adding more depth of utility to the set. Fitting Fog was no problem since the two-move combination of Knockoff and Brave Bird was as unstoppable as ever. Vullaby could have used just two moves and been just fine. But of course it didn't and made itself even more threatening by complementing the pair with either the momentum of U-turn or the Ponyard destroying coverage of HP fighting, which allowed Vullaby to defog freely without fearing defiant. Vullaby could also opt for an absurdly aggressive all-out assault with its murderous mix set. By adding HP grass and heat wave, it ripped through would-be checks with even greater ease, instantly dropping the likes of Onyx and Ferrocene that would normally be decent temporary stops. It could even go for an all-special nasty plot variant. A plus two special attack, plus two speed Vullaby was the stuff of nightmares plowing through offensive and defensive teams alike. These berry juice variants were the most common, but Z Vullaby was also absolutely terrifying. It adored the immunity to item removing effect of opposing Naka. It became an incredible absorber for the move, as it would receive the weak armor speed boost while maintaining its item. Brave Bird was also already monstrously powerful with knockoff removing Eviolites left and right, but when powered up into supersonic sky strike, it was something else entirely, easily blasting through the bulkiest Pokemon in the tier. No matter what set you used, chances were you wanted Vullaby on your team. It was in a league of its own and was considered borderline mandatory by many top players. It would not be far-fetched to compare Gen 7 Little Cup Vullaby to the likes of Gen 3 OU Tyranitar. Such was its impact on the landscape of the metagame. Gen 8 took Z moves and hidden power away from Vullaby, but no matter, it has basically repeated Gen 7, as it once again stands head and shoulders above every other Pokemon in Little Cup. Its physically offensive Berry Juice pivot set has returned to the forefront, threatening the whole metagame and defogging in equal measure, but the Nasty Plus set has also seen a comparable rise. Both sets' ability to outspeed the entire metagame after a weak armor boost remains as threatening as ever. However, Overcoat saw some occasional usage, as blocking Oddish's Sleep Powder was key for certain teams. In addition to the massive offensive threat it posted, Vullaby serves several important defensive functions. Grookey is one of the best, most popular new Pokemon, and Vullaby completely shuts it down, while Vullaby is also incredibly important as a defogger since it's immune to the dangerous sticky web. As if Vullaby wasn't threatening enough on its own, it became truly ridiculous when paired with Diglett or Trap Pinch. It can U-turn out of several would-be checks such as Onyx and Marini for one of the most devastating free KOs in the game. Overall, Vullaby has completely shaped Little Cup in its image for the second generation in a row, and it doesn't look to ease out the slightest bit anytime soon. 
And that's it. So how good was Vullaby actually? Well, it had a small niche in ORSPU, which is pretty cool. It's always fun to see non-fully evolved Pokemon in various tiers. And that was about it. The end. Thank you all for watching. Just kidding. Vullaby has had an interesting trajectory over the four generations of Little Cup it's existed in. Its inaugural generation didn't see it getting used until the generation was actually over. Thankfully, metagames don't stop being played just because they're no longer current, which is how we got to see Scarf Vullaby establish itself in a Murkrow-less Gen 5 Little Cup. It improved quite a bit in Generation 6, establishing itself as one of the tier's top most staples, then rode the Gen 7 weak armor buff to two consecutive generations as the defining Little Cup Pokemon. Pokemon's viability is in many ways shaped by their ability to handle or partner with Vullaby. Really, in Gen 7 and 8, everything else just exists in Vullaby's shadow. It is unquestionably one of the best, most defining Little Cup Pokemon in history. And it also had a small nation or SPU, which is pretty cool. Thanks for watching, everyone, and thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos and for voting for this Pokemon. And if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False White Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know what do you think about competitive Vullaby? Yeah, tell me what you think, because this is the first mostly Little Cup episode we've done. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.